Hi, today I'll teach you how to make a silver ring using tools you already own, probably, and a bar of silver, which you might not already own, but doesn't cost too much money. I'm going to really try to keep it bare bones here. We've got pliers, we got a hammer, and you're going to need a cutting tool but it doesn't matter what it is. Some cutting tools that might be a good are a bow saw. This one is specifically made for cutting metal and it has a really thin blade so you don't lose a lot of material. This is a chisel. If you sharpen this up, it'll cut silver, no problem. And this is a more specific cutting tool with two edges. We'll just hit these with a hammer and basically break this in half. If you have parallel pliers, they help. You'll also probably want some files. A uh, thing you can't live without is fire. Silver <laughs> won't, won't work without fire. So this is propane. This is a benzomatic. You don't need an extension tube. You can just use this attached to the blue bottle. Propane is hot enough to melt silver. You'll also need a large, heavy surface. So I use this little piece of metal attached to this tree chump. You can literally use the sidewalk, a rock, something that you're not going to hurt or destroy. Notice I have my fire extinguisher for safety. You will need some water. Pure silver, you can quench it in water. Uh, another thing you'll need is a insulative surface. I have here a dried out potato. I use it just to protect the surface when I put thing, hot things down. but. It is insulative. You can use a wet potato as well. It will work better. This is a charcoal block, which is more specific, but this is a much better insulative surface than a potato. You can use a sweet potato, a regular potato, a charcoal block. You can use a fire brick. You can use a piece of granite. You can use anything insulative. Um, if you do use charcoal, make sure to keep it wet. But when we use the fire, we need to sit this on something insulative. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm just going to cut it. So we're going to get two strips. To make cutting easier, hit this with fire first to soften it up. You may be able to see it's a little orange. Flip it around, hit it on this side. This is almost melted. I'm gonna go right into the water. This is now annealed, soft, and it's cold. It, like immediately, as soon as you quench it in the water. This is bendable now. Notice I used my vermiculite block, a little more purpose built than a charcoal block, but it does the same thing. But I'm gonna do my cutting on this large heavy anvil of sorts. Always wear eye protection. I'm gonna mark my cut with a sharpie. Here I'm just using a chisel and putting it on the metal and hitting it with a hammer and working my way down. This works well with the chisel and then we're going to bend it in half and snap it. I put a dent in. I'm going to take my two pliers and just bend it. Oh, oh no. Uh, you'll see it's got a little sharp edge because we ripped it apart. We're going to hit this with some more fire. And then we're going to we're going to bend it up. I might cut down the edges here. Hell, we'll keep it. Alright, I didn't do much work. This is a this is just a table with a piece of metal hanging off of it. Okay, I lied, I just did it with the hammer. Um so now the edges are kissing. You can kinda see light through it, but not too bad. And you'll notice that there's still these rounded edges. As of right now, that's part of our design.
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to fuse these edges shut. So that's fun. Uh, when fusing, I really do recommend using the charcoal or a potato. A uh, potato will be stinkier. But I'm going to keep my charcoal nice and wet because I do not want it to burn. So you can put this on a brick. But do use a carbon. This is carbon based, right? Potato is also carbon based insulation. We want the insulation not to burn, so we keep it wet. We're going to put our ring form here and uh, we're going to add another piece of metal in the crack and then we're going to melt that metal and then these two sides will join together um, and we're going to use this fine silver so in the end this ring will be a hundred percent fine silver I'm not going to use any solder you don't need to this is called fusing so I have this piece of silver here and it's just I made a little strip and we're going to put this into the crack here. What we're going to do is we're going to hit this with the propane. The little bit will melt first and then the other sides will melt and hopefully we'll have a single piece at the end. Yeehaw! You'll notice steam coming off of the charcoal block. You'll notice the little piece getting a uh, warmer color than everything else because it's going to heat up at a higher rate. I'm trying to bring the entire system up to temperature though. Alright, the top bit's about to melt. It is melting. And the rest of the ring is starting to melt. It is melting. Concentrating the heat right on the top. It looks like it's wet. It's melting. All right, it is melted together. It is one solid piece at this point. I'm going to try to convince it to go a little further. Yep. Okay. It is fully melted at this point. So it looks red. If you look on the inside, there is no more air. That piece of metal melted right in. So the two edges are now fused together. No, we did not use any chemicals, we did not use any pickle, we didn't need to prime this with any nasty acids or anything. There is no copper. Silver does not react with the air, it does not oxidize. You can just fuse it together. I'm going to quench this. Okay, now it's cool. Cool enough to touch, right? Um, but this is a solid ring. You could flatten this out and wear this right now. This is hypoallergenic. This we've added nothing. It is made of 99.9% .9 silver. Um, it is very soft. You can manipulate this by hand if you were strong enough. <laughs> That's ugly, but okay. There we go. We're gonna get this into a shape. I'm gonna use a thing called a mandrel, but you can just use so anything round. So I'm gonna use my purpose-built materials, but. Man, the analogy is you can use anything. That's already pretty good. You could already wear this. We're going to hit this with a hammer on here. So this ring is really small. To make it bigger, you're going to want to heat it up and quench it so it's cold. And then you're going to want to hit it with a hammer some more on a larger and larger circle thing. The silver will spread out, the walls will get thinner, but the interior diameter will get bigger. You can note that the walls are about two millimeters thick. It's a very hefty ring, but it, it I mean, it has, it's pretty in its own right. Every ring that you make out of silver or gold has an analogy to this. Sterling silver is silver with copper added. The copper makes it harder which you can read about in textbooks. Pure silver has no alloy. Pure silver is elemental silver. Uh, pure gold would act just like this. You can fuse pure gold just as we have done here. This fuse joint might crack. Uh, if it does, you can fuse it again. The joint will get stronger the more times it's fused. Basically the metal from this side will move to this side and they'll crisscross. They'll melt into each other, and then they'll freeze. 
what we basically asked was this little piece of metal just seep into both sides and then act as a glue. The other way to make silver silver jewelry is to use another material called a solder. This is a hard solder. It's made of 70% silver, 20% other stuff. And the other stuff melts at a lower temperature. We probably have zinc and copper in here. This would act exactly as that little strip. When you put the solder in there, the solder melts first and then it'll melt into the other sides. The silver content at the joint will alloy with those other metals and it'll become a singular metal with multiple compositions. On the outside over here it will remain pure silver but in the center it will be closer to 70 percent silver. You'll have a gradient of silver content until it is 100 percent silver. You wouldn't expect a solder joint to get any further than you know a couple millimeters. Any corrosion, any nastiness would happen at the solder joint. The solder joint will turn black if you heat it up. That is oxidation. If you do solder, you have to pickle after to eat the oxidation. Pickle is a weak acid. You can use any acid, including vinegar. We did not have to use a pickle for the fusion joint because the fusion joint has no metal in it that corrodes. You'll find that solder joints are weaker than fusion joints. This will be a stronger joint. This has no chemical weaknesses other than sulfur. Every ring I made has stemmed from this ring. Delicate pieces you want to solder on, the delicate piece will melt into a puddle of goo, just like this little strip here did. That's when we use solder to melt before the delicate silver. Same with gold. This is not the only way to fuse metal. You can also use a laser or electricity to melt to the metal at the joint. If you use a laser, it's called laser welding. And if you use an electric welder, it'll just be called welding. Add heat exactly where you need it, and it melts the joint. And then the two sides will join together when that melt re-solidifies. I like propane because it's cheaper. Remember, wear your eye protection. I wear headphones as hearing protection, but can also wear real hearing protection. With the correct design, this is marketable. Thank you for watching my video. I hope this was informative. Uh, I appreciate it.